So welcome to this course. I hope you've managed to download VS Code and have a look at the first introduction, the getting started video. Now we're going to have a brief um, introduction, which is a bit of theory around coding. What is it? What does it do? Why is it useful to learn it? OK, so the, what we're going to learn is what is code? What is a website? Because the course that this covers is mostly the code to do with building a website. And what three languages are there on a website? OK, so we're going to cover those things just now. What is code? What is this mysterious stuff that you see on people's screens, um, all black and green or something? Well, it's not quite a mystery, but people call it for different names, coding or programming, developing. You can be a web developer, an application developer. You can do scripting. You can write scripts for different things or people, whatever. But coding is not hacking. Um, although they are closely related, hacking is something different. OK, just bear that in mind. What is code? Code is instructions that you provide to a computer that it will run. And you need to provide all of the instructions in one go, and then the computer will run those instructions. So that often means that there are errors, because the computer can run instructions that you haven't finished writing yet. And that's a great way of figuring out what you need to write. You run it, you get an error. And you go back to the drawing board, write a bit more code, and you get a different error. And that's how we basically we code. <laughs> Just keep bumping into errors until there are none. But of course, it takes time uh, for those things to happen. So there is a bit of a what's called a feedback loop. So you write your code, you run it, there are mistakes, you go back, you write some more code. That is the process we'll be following. Is there code in the universe around us? Is it just humans who write code? No. This is an illustration that highlights that there is code everywhere around us. This is um, a strand of DNA. DNA is code. DNA is much cleverer code than humans write because our code is all compiled down to binary. So it's either a one or it's a zero. But DNA has four letters instead. So it's base four. So you can store a lot more information in DNA than you can in a computer. Currently, people are looking at DNA to store data, which would be massive improvement because you can put a lot more information in DNA. But also just think about the laws that govern the universe around us. Mathematics, that's a form of code, isn't it? Um, and that is able, because that is able to form the government, the, the, the systems of governance around us, the, the uni laws of the universe, um, which is pretty impressive, isn't it? Uh, but also animals follow a code. They follow their instinct whether it's migrations or building a nest or building a farm like ants do. Um, every animal um, is governed by instinct or code. But code governs the world around us. There are lots of things that work because of code, and a lot of things in our world wouldn't work without them. For example, your heating is probably controlled by code. You wouldn't want to get that to go wrong, would you? you get freezing cold. Or the stock exchange, whenever you buy or sell anything. Um, where you live, what job you have, that's governed by the stock exchange, which is governed by code. Deliveries, shipping, trains, it's all code. And hacking. Hacking is a much bigger part of the world around us than you might think initially. But it does have a big impact on warfare, on the way we, what we do, on the commercial aspects of our life. So coding is very useful, very practical, and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. But we're going to specifically drill down to look at websites because I wanted to give you something that could help you get started with coding. And so I think webs, building a website is probably the easiest way because it starts off with pretty pretty low um, like barrier to entry, HTML and CSS, and then you go on to other more complicated things after that. What is a website? It could be one of these things. It's either a page of information, just text and images, or it's an interactive experience, like a game and you can have built on the web. It could be an input mechanism, like when you're applying for a new passport or, or to, to go on holiday, you fill out a form, and that's an input mechanism. Or you can have a combination of all those things, and it could be a shop, where you also provide um, transaction details and you purchase things. So a website could be anyone or a combination of these things. 
And what three languages make up a website? Its skeleton or its structure, the way it is laid out, is the HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. I'm going to have a, a lesson on that a bit later. Then CSS is how it looks, what clothes it wears, um, its skin, those kind of things, and whether it's appealing or not, <laughs> in the eye of the beholder, I guess. But CSS, or cascading style sheets, allow us to do that. And JavaScript is how it works, its muscular system, and we can even say its nervous system. Um, because it can be quite clever and can do quite a lot of things. And it can manipulate both the HTML and the CSS and do other things. So JavaScript is more complicated. We're going to just touch on JavaScript. We're mostly going to cover HTML and CSS in this lesson, okay, in this course. So can you answer what is code, what is a website, and what three languages are there on a website? Have a think about those, see if you can remember that. So that is the first lesson. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to coding and I'll see you in the next one.